Hakuna Matata, Hakuna Matata, Hakuna Matata, Hakuna Matata. Hey guys! So today we're going to talk a little bit about how to channel your inner child. And last week we talked about creating shameless self-love and part of that was me talking about having lots of fun and really tapping into your inner child. So I want to expand on that a little bit. Um, this is a huge, huge spiritual principle that many of us as grown-ups forget about and I really want to start with um, giving you some tips on that and the first one that we're going to start with is really learning to have fun and really channeling your inner child is getting back to what is fun to you a principle that is correlated with this is in the course of miracles that says you know miracles are natural expressions of love and what we do what we love to do we're usually having fun you know I know when I'm doing what I love to do I'm having fun and we really forget this as we get older and we really it's not just about getting older, but when we detoured into the fear, we really forgot about how we need to have fun and how much it's important to have fun. And of course, the ego is going to feed us lots of stuff about seriousness. That's what the ego is about. It's very much about being serious, taking everything so seriously. You know, we can't laugh. We can't have fun. I mean, the ego does anything and everything to survive. So whatever it can give us, any little tricks it can give us to keep us out of the happiness and the love, it's going to give us. And it really kind of gives us this idea, you know, that we need to be serious, that we need to be, um, not having fun in order to get things done. So, you know, we go to work because we have to pay the bills, not necessarily because we think work is fun. So really tapping into your inner child is really understanding this idea that miracles really come as a natural expression of love. So most of us try to get things in life, okay, and we're usually in this get mode, getting mode, not giving mode, because we're thinking that if we manipulate and we control, then things will happen. That's not the way the flow, God, the universe actually operates. So when we're doing that, we're really operating against the flow because the flow really is very natural. It just knows how to go with love. If you were doing the things that you would love, the love would just naturally flow out of you when you become that love your life just kind of falls into place so you'll realize when you become that love relationships will fall into place the job you love will fall into place everything will begin to fall into place I've seen this in my own life when I really became the love that I wanted in my own life for myself and when I worked on that relationship, you know, I attracted the relationship into my life that was connected to that love, that I attracted someone who was already in that state. Before that, you know, my relationships could very, it's, they seemed to be very dysfunctional because I was attracting, you know, people in my life. They had their own stuff. I had my own stuff. I was trying to get from them the love that I didn't know how to give myself. I mean, that's a lot to ask for someone, for them to be my source of happiness. You know, that's not where happiness, true happiness really comes from. So as you begin to understand that you need to be that love, you know, life will just fall into place. And the reason why I'm saying connect to your inner child is because we stop believing in this stuff. Okay, it's like a fairy tale. You start growing up and you're thinking, no, that's for kids. You're not, you're not going to believe in fairy tales anymore because you're a grown up. You know better. And I'm going to tell you, no, you don't. The reality is you have to go back to that child state of mind where you do believe in innocence and love and guilt people being not guilty okay we're really used to believing in that oh we have to say somebody's wrong and we have to say somebody's right you know we have to hold on to things we can't just let it go have you ever seen a child after something happens most of the time they get over it and then they just go about their business playing like nothing happened adults not so much we think that if we do that we're not going to have boundaries and people are going to take advantage of us i mean that's all that ego stuff that comes up for us so that's why i'm saying tapping into your inner child channeling your inner child it's really important because you really believe, you know, in the innocence of things. You really recaptivate your own innocence and you really start vibrating out of this place of internal love. Today, out of all days, I am convinced that love and miracles are totally possible and they're totally powerful because, you know, the Egypt thing just happened today. And that is a true example that it is possible. It's not naive you know, and, and dumb or stupid to believe that there's such a power out there so powerful that, you know, we can 
get down on our knees and pray and believe in miracles and really tap into love and see things happen in our lives. And if massive amounts of people do this, look what could happen. Miracles can happen on a massive consciousness level that we would not believe possible before because we're really not truly understanding the power of love. So the first one is really understanding that miracles happen as a natural expression of love. It doesn't say manipulate the love. It doesn't say control the love. You know, it's a natural expression, meaning that you have faith that as you tap into this power, it will flow out of you. The second thing I want to give you is tapping into your channeling your inner child is really understanding the spiritual principle of not focusing on the frame of things, really focusing on the content. So what that means is stop thinking about how life should have looked like or how you want life to look like and actually really focus on how you feel when you're doing things. That's why having fun is great because most of us feel really feel really good when we're having fun. When we're doing other things, we tend not to feel as good. So that's why I'm saying focus in on your feelings about things. So if you see a child when they're playing, they're just having a blast. And that's what we really want. They don't care about how things look on the outside. Have you ever seen a child run? If you watch a child run, they run like their limbs are going to fall off. And like someone's chasing them. And if they don't run away, they're going to die. And they don't care. You know, they look, they look pretty crazy sometimes. Running away and running. But their arms are flailing everywhere. Their legs are going. And they take wipeouts. And they just get back up again and start running again. They really do not care about how something looks. They really care more about how they're feeling in that moment. So that's what we really want to get back to, focusing on your life about how you feel in any particular moment about what's going on in your life. So stop dreaming of the dream job that you think is going to look a particular way and really focus on how you would feel in a place where you are happy. How would you really feel if you were doing what you enjoy to do? I love being in a school because apparently I love being around children. Hence why I'm telling you, get back to channeling your inner child. Because I'm around children all day long, it's really easy for me to channel my inner child because they're always, they just naturally know how to have fun. So it's really important to me in my life to place myself in a place where I'm going to feel good. So I look more for the let's be around children because they make me feel good, you know, than really focusing on what the frame actually looks like. So focusing on the frame could be, you know, the pay that I'm going to get or the location where I'm going to be or what my office is going to look like. You know, it's like bump the, all that. Who cares about all that? I just want to be in a place where I feel really good. And a lot of times for me, that's being around children because they easily remind me, okay, you know, forget about that. Just go ahead and have fun. They, they don't care about that stuff. And it really, really brings me to a place of understanding this concept that that is really where life is meant to be lived from. So of course, as adults, we think we know better. So when children start, you know, showing these signs of not caring, we quickly tell them how they're wrong and how they need to care about how things look like because they're also not going to make it in this world. And we need to um, give them fear. You know, they'll learn if they're scared. You know, I hear that a lot at school. So we tend to think that this is what's going to work best for kids when really, as a child, most of us were in the perfect state of love. We just knew how to be love. And then as we started this detour, as the one thing came in and the other thing came in and then the other experience came in and our parents said something and someone said something to us at school, we began, began this detour out of the love and really disconnecting with this inner child that is in all of us. And the last one is really just reminding you guys that it's a huge spiritual principle and the reason why I say this and the reason why I think, believe it so much in my life is I think Jesus was really radical with spiritual principles. I think that's one of the reasons why he was killed because he said a lot of things in his time that people just didn't get. And sometimes we still don't get it to this day. And there's a beautiful story where he's preaching to grown-ups. And of course, his disciples are thinking this is a serious topic. And all these kids come up to him, probably interrupt him, you know, because kids... They just want to hug you. That's what they do. And they come and they hug him. And they're trying to shoo them away. You know, and he says a very important spiritual principle that is if you are not like a child, you will not be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. And what this really means is until we as grown-ups go back to this state of innocence, of really tapping into love, learning how to have fun, believing that that is how life is meant to be, we will not be able to live heaven here on earth. It will just not be accessible. We will continuously be creating this hell that we have been creating for ourselves, full of worries, full of stress, full of responsibilities, full of misery, thinking that we have to do things because that's just the way things are. And until we really make that choice to go back to that state of being a child where we can believe in innocence, where we can believe 
that love does conquer things, that love is able to heal, okay, that it's able to really forgive someone, that love is really able to take you to this miraculous place where life becomes light again, like a child. You know, it's like they don't have a care in the world sometimes. And to go back to that place where we know that everything is being taken care of for us. And that's, I think sometimes that's why children feel that way because they know their parents are going to feed them. Their parents are going to prep in the house. You know, if, if everything's functioning like it usually functions in society, a child is provided for. Of course, then we have this detouring as a consciousness into situations where a baby's abandoned or, you know, some child needs to be adopted or whatever the case may be or a child doesn't have a father or like myself, that I never met my father, there's always these situations that, yes, it can come up in our consciousness because of our detour into the fear, you know. But just, you know, a child that has their parents that love them, that has family that loves them, that's going to school, is going to a good school, whatever the scenario may be, you know, without attaching too many words to it, that child just knows how to be happy, knows how to be okay. And until we get back to that place where we just know that, we know that we were taken care of and that's why we can be okay, we do not have access to heaven. And heaven would always be waiting for us. It's always there. Love is always in us. It's the presence of love and God is always with us. It's just our awareness of it needs to come back. And when we wake up, we really become children again. We really begin to believe in these things like fairy tales and that impossible can happen. Children can believe in Santa Claus because they still don't have this concept of like, oh, certain things are real and certain things just don't work out that way. They don't have that fear that it's like that. In their head, anything is possible. We constantly tell them to use your imagination. So I'm telling you, get back to being a child. For everybody, this looks very different. Having fun is going to look different for you. I would say take the time to sit down and think about your childhood and think of the things in your childhood that you did that were fun. I was very quiet. I did a lot of puzzles. I did a lot of word searches. I like to write. I like to draw. I like to kind of pretend play, you know, house or pretend play doctor or whatever it is that I did. So for me, sometimes it's really just sitting down and remembering, okay, I used to do puzzles. I can't remember the last time I did puzzles. Maybe I need to go buy another puzzle and start doing puzzles again and really begin to bringing back the fun in my life. And I'm telling you, when I feel that inner child in me, I just, everything is good. I just feel happy. I just want to be around people. I just believe that impossible things can happen. I believe that Egypt can happen because I know how to tap into that inner child inside of me, that innocence in me, that love in me that knows that anything is possible, that miracles can happen, that people can heal, that you can let go of things, that I don't have to hold on to a grudge for years and years and years, that life can be really light and beautiful and easy because there's something powerful out there that is connected to me that is spending every single moment giving me the best life out there possible. And all I need to do is just recognize that and become aware of that so that I can really begin to live this life of miracles. So I hope this helps you out. I hope you channel your inner child. It's so much fun. Any chance I get to do something that has anything to do with children, I do it because I know that is the best way to f have fun maybe ride a ride in the mall like have you ever seen those little rides i'm pretty small so sometimes i climb on those little rides i just like it and i don't care this is the point being a child means i don't care what people think of me i'm not worried about what it looks like on the outside i just know that at that moment i feel happy i feel silly and it feels good to feel that way so really i ask you to really be empowered by this take the courage to really believe that love is capable of these miracles and if your parents you're going to become better parents. You're going to have so much fun with your children because you're going to be able to connect with them on a completely different level, on a very real and very spiritual level. This is a very spiritual discipline that I'm giving you. Um, it's in the Bible. It's in many spiritual books. You know, it's very, it's a very serious thing for us as a consciousness to get back to our innocence, to get back into our belief in miracles and fairy tales and love. So have a great week. I hope you have a great weekend. And take care and see you next time. Bye.